Hi guys, welcome back to World Mechanics. Today we are going to show you how to replace the drive shaft on our BMW X3. This one is the rear drive shaft. It's causing lots of vibration on our vehicle. The joints are right here. We have lots of play. This is the remanuf remanufactured one, rebuilt. We got it on eBay. 382 bucks for the whole shaft. And uh, you need to send the old one back or you have to pay extra $80. And I can send you the link if you need it too. The guy is pretty good, pretty good quality. We used him in the past. Stay with us to see how we we are going to do that. So in order to remove the drive shaft, we need to remove the exhaust. And what we did, we just drove the vehicle on the stands to show you how you can do it at home. But what if we have noticed on this vehicle right here? In order to remove the exhaust, we need to remove these four bolts and they're like welded from all the heat, they never been removed and we have the feeling that they will break. So we're going to attempt to just drop the exhaust down a little bit so we can reach the drive shaft without removing the whole exhaust. It's easier to remove it if you can, but if you break one of those bolts you have to drill it out and it's really a pain in the butt to do that. So stay with us to see if we actually can do it without dropping the exhaust. Okay, now we're in the middle of the vehicle and we need to remove these four bolts right here. And there is four more on the other side. This, this one is holding the exhaust up to the body. So with a 13 millimeter socket and back, you can just use a ratchet. Take them off, all four of them. Okay, and now we can pull this metal plate out of there. And next we need to do the other four. Two on this side and two on the other side. Okay, we're done with these two and now two more. And now be careful, the exhaust might drop a little bit. The rear one is still holding, so... Okay, a little bit. Okay, and now you can pull that metal plate out too, like that. And we have one ground wire that we need to remove with it. Okay, now we are on the back muffler and on the 3.0 engine, I don't think the 2.5 has that one. You need to remove that vacuum line right there. That's the one that opens the gate on the, on the muffler. It closes and it opens one of them, depending on your RPMs. And now we have two bolts right there that we need to remove with a 13 millimeter socket. It's really hard to show you guys, but they're in the corner. Okay, let me show you right there. And those are holding the exhaust up. So okay, right there, that's the nut. So before you proceed to remove mold, you need to put a block, wood block or something holding the exhaust so it doesn't fall on you. Okay, this is the second nut. This one had some rust, build. And now we have two more on the other side. And they are identical like the ones here. And now the last one right there. And now the whole exhaust, it comes down, as you can see, quite a bit. So I think it will give us enough room to remove the drive shaft without removing the whole exhaust system and the four bolts that are very problematic on this model. Okay, this metal shield plate right there, there is many bolts with 10 millimeter socket that we need to remove all the way and it will come off. There is quite a few of those, so uh, one here in the corner, but ours is missing. Okay. And one down there, next to the center muffles. One in the corner This is there. good. Okay, and now you can pull the phone piece out, kind of like be careful not to bend it too much. It's fixable if you bend it. And to pull it out of there. Ok, 
okay, right there, this is the cold steel plate. Okay guys, as you can see, we have the exhaust down, so we don't need to remove those nasty nuts right there. And now this is the drive shaft right here, that's the transfer case and the drive shaft with the, uh, with the support bearing, the center bearing right there. So now we need to remove the drive shaft, probably the easiest way to do this is with the flex disc together. And we're going to replace the flex disc outside. Ours is brand new, we just installed it a few thousand miles ago. So you need an 18 millimeter wrench or a socket. And you need to remove the three bolts that it bolts to the transfer case. Because if you need to remove the one that goes on the flex disc, you need to use a wrench to hold the nut and then a socket on the, on the other side and it's more inconvenient. It's easier to replace it outside. As you can see, we can get all three of them at the same time. The top one, we'll need to use a long extension. Okay, right there. And we just need to take this one out. That's the third one. Next step, we need to remove the support bearing with a 13 millimeter socket right there. Two nuts, we need to take them off all the way. Okay, and this is the second nut that we removed. And now, you can just pull it out of the bracket right there, out of the bolts. Next step, with big pliers or a wrench that size, we recommend a wrench, but we don't have one. We can take that nut off right there. And by taking it loose, of all the way and now with big screwdriver here you can get the flex seal right there you see where it's light on the transfer case shaft and it comes right off now you'll be able to get it through the exhaust right here one person just needs to pull the exhaust a little bit to the left side of the vehicle and this is the phone half piece of the shaft. Okay, now we need this socket. It's called uh, Torx E12. As you can see, that's the one. And we need to remove four bolts right here where the rear half of the dry shaft bolts to the differential. It's four of them. You just need to take them off. If you cannot reach one, you can jack the one of the rear tires off and that way you'll be able to access all of them. Okay, now we're just taking them off. Those are really tight sometimes, so we, we, you might need to use a big ratchet or a break over bar. Especially if they sometimes they build the rust and dirt deposits inside the thread. Okay, right there, this is the ball, that's what it looks like, one of them, and now the second one is right there. Okay, this is the second one now, right there. And now in order to get to the top ones, again, if you jack one of the tires up, you can spin the tire and the drive shaft will move to a new position. Okay, we got those this already. All we need to do is just take them off these two bolts and that makes four of them and that drive shaft should come out of there. Okay, now we're about to remove the last bolt. Okay, right there. And now the drive shaft is still stuck on there, so what we are going to need is a screwdriver right there so we can break it loose. It hasn't been removed, so it's stuck pretty good. Yeah, okay, we just got it out. We had to use the pry bar to get it out. It was stuck right here, as you can see where the rust built pretty good. And those bearings right here, they're completely shot. Let me show you how much play it has in it. Okay, watch now. Hold on one second, okay, that's the play in it. And that causes unbelievable vibrations. So what we need to do now, install the new one. Well, in our case, it's a rebuild one, but it's pretty good quality. And what you need to make sure is that you do not uh, take both pieces apart because they're perfectly balanced. The new one comes balanced. It's a special machine that balances both pieces together. So if you are going to take it apart for some reason always mark where you took it apart okay and this is the old one right here that's what was causing our trouble so now we need to get the flex disc of the front piece of our drive shaft right here 
and install it on the new one. It's attached with three bolts with 18 mm socket and a wrench of these two wrenches, 18 mm. And you can take them off and put it back on the new shaft. Right, now when you install the flex disc, you need to make sure that those arrows are pointing towards the drive shaft and the other ones are pointing towards the transfer case. Make sure you do not uh, mismatch those. It's only uh, one way that it should go. Okay, we got, we got the new drive shaft. And now what you want to do is you need to install the center bearing, the support bearing first. So it's holding the drive shaft in place and it's not going to be moving everywhere. So it's easy to attach it to the differential and the transfer case as well. Now for the bolts, it's always good to apply thread locker because that way from vibrations, they're not going to get loose. So you need to apply a little bit on the bolt and then just install the four bolts and get them tight. Don't forget to get them tight because if you leave them loose and you start driving, you're going to lose them. The drive shaft will come off and will make a big mess. Okay, now we install the four bolts here. You need to install all four and then get them tighter because otherwise it won't center pretty good and you won't be able to put the other bolts in if you just install two at a time. And now the flex disc does not align with the transfer case so we need to jack the rear end of the car one of the tires and spin it in make sure that the bolts line good line up good and we can install the three bolts there okay right here now as you can see we line the holes up and we are ready to install the three bolts make sure you get them tight all three of them with 18 millimeter socket or the wrench and you need to get tight then those two, uh, two nuts there for the center bearing, the support bearing. If the drive shaft is, is too short, you need to un uh, get this nut loose right here with the pliers. And you can extend the drive shaft to where it gets to the transfer gate. But make sure that you do not pull the two pieces apart and make sure that you tighten the nut once you are done installing the drive shaft because if you forget it might unbalance the drive shaft. And all we need to do is install the metal plate and the exhaust. Thank you guys for watching us. If you have any questions, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a like. We upload about five new videos every week.